Adam, I guess the first question, we saw you on television uh, a few weeks ago. You told your story. And how are you feeling like uh, today as far as, you know, your health and, and ready to return and all that? Like, how do you feel? I, I feel great. Uh, again, like the idea of just being able to be back on the road in some capacity and kind of just be around AEW has been great for me mentally, for sure. But as far as physically, it's it's the best I've ever felt. Um, I still have I still have a little ways to go until I get to a point where I think I'm ready to rock and roll as far as going in the ring and having a 30 or 45 minute match. Uh, but it, as far as how I'm feeling, again, compared to even two and a half, three months ago, I feel fantastic. Uh, I feel really, really good. And, and then, like I said, just mentally to be able to be back um, at AEW, around the fans, around the crew has been has been huge for me. So I feel good. I feel really good. Now, from the, uh, I, I know the the concussion standpoint, like that was a whole thing. You explained it on yeah. TV, but did that also allow your body to kind of freshen up to heal? Like, was is there a, a little, not that anything was positive about the injury, but did were you able to actually feel a lot better body wise as well because of the time off? No, I, I was thinking about that a lot because I did have, you know, a fair amount of time. It, it's been like six months since I had uh, had a match. So and, and I was going back and thinking about my career and over the 15 year career that I've had, I think the longest amount of time I was ever away from the road in any capacity was like a month, a month and a half. Because yeah, there was a point where I injured my uh, shoulder Um very early on and I had to get surgery, but it's, I was still like a month later back on the road and, and still doing stuff and being around wrestling to travel. So being actually away for that amount of time, I kept trying to focus on all the positives. And one of the things I kept telling myself was, okay, this has got to be great for my body to, to give myself a second to kind of recoup and, and heal. And I did, I, I noticed certain things of like, I was sleeping better. Um, I felt like as I was training in the gym and stuff, when I got cleared to get back into the gym, I felt better. So, yeah, I think it was definitely a plus in that sense uh, of getting the chance to fully recover and make sure that I have years and years of my of my pro wrestling career left. When you were, uh, you know, when you had the the injury, and I'd say the second one after yeah. uh, the it would be the Samoa Joe match in the Owen Hart finals, right? Yes, yes, yeah. that was the first one. Yep. Okay, so this, oh, the second was the 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 Okada four way. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. So after that, after that match, and um, like how you went, probably went through a bunch of stages over the la the next six seven months. Um, yeah. But I mean, as far as I mean, the first thing I remember is is like you know you had a concussion and it was and it was bad. You know, I remember yeah. being told like it's it's bad and and you know it's bad like you can't leave the house bad. And I was like, whoa, that's. I mean, and then. What was that like? And I you sort of explained that, but what was that like mentally as far as because you don't, you know, the thing, the problem with the concussion is, is you don't know. I mean, you don't know if you'll be ready in three weeks and you don't know if you'll be ever ready. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was that was definitely the scariest process, you know, aside from the fact that, um, again, anytime you get a head injury, it's always a, a little bit scary. But for me, the, the scariest part was after like a month had gone by because the first three weeks to a month, um, you're like, okay, I'm just recovering. I'm just healing. I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to have any side effects. Everything will be great. And then the crazy thing was that after even a month, it was like, that's when like real serious side effects started happening. Like again, I, I, literally everything I said um, in my return in ring promo that I did, all of that was true and more. Um, it, it, there was a lot of stuff that was happening uh, very late into the healing process or what I thought was late, uh, like a, a month and a half, two months. But I was genuinely very, very nervous and really afraid that I might be told I'm not allowed to wrestle again. Um, but for me, I have a tendency lots of times where when I get bad news, I just assume the worst. I like mentally prepare myself to go, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this new chapter of my life. Of course, I had the hope and and dream of being able to get back in there. But just with all the all the news I was getting, how I was feeling, I'm like, oh, my God, how am I, I? I can't be in a car for more than 15 minutes, and it's been two months. Um, how am I ever going to get into a wrestling ring again? Uh, but, but fortunately, I've said this before, too, but fortunately, the doctors that I had around me, AEW, by the way, was 
fantastic through this entire process. It was like, I, I barely had to think. It was like so many things were set up for me in the middle of all of this, where I was seeing doctors again, like three times a week. Um, they, they just wanted to make sure I was healthy and feeling okay. I was constantly being checked on. So in that sense, it was wonderful. But again, I, I did have like a genuine fear of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'm 33 years old and I am not even close to wanting to be done with wrestling yet. So it was scary. Did you um, ever talk to Danielson by any chance during this period? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I briefly talked to him and, and he obviously has a, a ton of information uh, regarding that entire process. So yeah, he, he was very helpful, very giving with information. Uh, just wanted to make sure that, that I was doing some of the right things to get back and feel healthy. So yeah, he was great. He was great. Yeah, Cause he did. He, he probably tried everything in the book because you know, he was out for, for years. Right. And, right. And, exactly. and, you know, and, and he actually was told, you know, that, you know, by, by WWE that, you know, you will, you will never wrestle again. Right. And, um, you know, I don't think he ever fully accepted it. And, uh, you know, and, and then you look at it, it's one of those, those things where, you know, you're told by a doctor, you know, you're never going to wrestle again. It's not healthy. And, and here, and here he is. And we watch him, you know, every other Wednesday, practically, or, and lately every Wednesday, just yeah. having like killer matches, you know, right. and seem, seemingly being great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that what that was incredibly motivating. I know me and Brian's situations were, um, Obviously, there's some similarities, but they were also very different all, all at the same time. But it was it was it was motivating to me to think, OK, he was told that you are just you're not going to step into a ring again. It's just not going to happen. And, and then Brian did everything he possibly could to get to a point where now a bunch of doctors are saying, yeah, you're good to go. You're, you're ready to go. And, and he's proven that now week after week, just having absolutely incredible matches. So, yeah, Brian was very helpful, very, very helpful. Can you kind of describe like like what happened in in both the Samoa Joe match and in the four way match? Um, it, it, what what the what the basic things are as far as you remember and what you your thoughts were when it when it happened? Yeah, yeah. So in a lot of ways, I'll go back even earlier where I, I kind of felt like just even even day to day, I felt pretty banged up. Um, in general, like, like I, I was doing okay, and I've I've wrestled sore, and and I've worked for months being banged up. A lot of wrestlers have, obviously, that's just part of what we do. But I kind of noticed um, that certain things weren't adding up correctly. For example, when it, when I re-injured my shoulder, um, that was you know, I I had just got done with the uh, Hangman Page uh, matchup at the pay per view, and I and I'm warming up getting ready for another match. And I just felt this sharp pain in my shoulder and I didn't understand what it was. And I'm just warming up. This is before I even got out there. And then I went and got it checked out and there was a partial tear in my labrum and a strange mm. rotator cuff just from warming up. And I'm like, what is going on? And then a few weeks after that is the uh, Owen Hart final with Samoa Joe. And again, j nothing particularly like caught me or got me. There was no moment where I was like, Ooh, this is what did it for me. And all of a sudden, I just noticed that my body was not moving correctly with what my brain was telling it to do. It, I remember everything, but I remember being so confused that I, like, my legs didn't feel like they were working correctly. Uh, I just felt like I was walking weird. My balance was off. Uh, and then after that match, again, immediately, the doctors thought something was up. I got tested. They said that I, I had a head injury there. Um, so again, normally after that, I thought everything was okay. I, I, had, I had taken a few weeks off getting ready for Forbidden Door. I had passed every single test I had, I had to take. So I thought, oh, I'm good to go. And then again, uh, this at the Forbidden Door matchup, the strangest thing about that is I remember feeling, feeling really good. I had taken a bump where I felt a little bit weird, but it wasn't, again, it wasn't anybody's fault. It was a normal bump. And I remember thinking, oh, okay, that felt a little strange. And about 30 seconds go by, and then it's like I have no recollection or memory of what I'm supposed to do, what happened in the match. The, the memory stuff is the really, really scary part to me. When, when, you're, when you're in the middle of a ring and there's thousands of people around you and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing, that, that was really scary. Um, so I knew, I knew pretty early on. Um, or not pretty early on in the match, but pretty early on after my memory started going that that something was wrong. 
Uh, and then once again, got to the back and got got checked out. And that one was really scary because they were so um, close to each other. So, and, and it wasn't just scary because of how close they were to each other, but what really scared me a lot, and this is part of where the concern of if I am going to be able to wrestle again came from, is once again, it what I didn't take anything insane. It wasn't this dramatic move or this insanely dangerous move that I had taken. It was like a standard pro wrestling match where now I'm at a point where I can't remember uh, what I'm supposed to be doing, where I am or what's going on. So so that that really created a lot of fear in me. And I think a lot of fear in a lot of the doctors as well. So um, yeah, that's kind of what happened. It felt like this domino effect of first it was the shoulder, then it was the head, then it was, okay, let's rest three or four weeks. And then it was the head again. And so that was, uh, it, it was definitely the scariest part of my career, I think, in, in the 15 years I've been doing this. And then, um, I mean, at what point in this recovery period did you, you know, kind of turn the corner from being like gravely concerned about your career? And, and, and as far as like during this period, I mean, like what emotions you're going through? Because like you said, you know, you're 32, 33 years old and, yeah, you know, you're in the prime of your career and you're, yeah. you're doing great and you're you know what i mean you're you're really you've really been you know you've got the thing i don't say you got the thing figured out but you've got you know you've got your act down you're very over you're very charismatic you know you know what to do and then all of a sudden it's like you know what to do i know how to do this and it's like but i can't do this and yeah. you know like did as far as was there a turning point or did it just gradually the the headaches, the headaches went away a little bit or things like that yeah, yeah. So um, as far as emotionally what I was going through, um, obviously, I think the head injury played a part um, in how I was feeling, especially early on the first few months. Like, um, I, I know um, I talked with, with Britt about this before, but there would be times where for no reason um, I would just start crying and she would ask me what's wrong or what happened. And I genuinely would look at her and I meant it. And I would say, I don't know. I have no idea why I'm so emotional. Um, and then, you know, aside from the the head injury side effects, uh, again, my entire life um, has been devoted to pro wrestling. You know, when I was nine years old, that's all I ever wanted to do. And, and getting to have the career that I've had uh, is something that I'll cherish forever. You know, I, I love pro wrestling more than anything in the world. And, and the idea of imagining that, that could be over at such a young age or at such an important part of my career was, was devastating to me. But then I would go back and forth and say, Nope, I have a, I have a great team of doctors around me. I am, I am working as hard as I possibly can every single day to make sure that I get back. I'm going to do it. This is just another speed bump and I'm going to get through it. So early on, there were a lot of ups and downs in that sense, but, but I do for me, there were there were a couple of moments, but the big one is, and I, I won't go into crazy detail, but but long story short, there was a test I had to take two months um, after that second head injury, and um, that test, I scored so poorly um, mm -hmm. that there was a concern of whether or not I could even drive, and that was two months after the the second head injury, so that was absolutely devastating, and I remember thinking, oh my god, this is this is real. This could potentially be something that I deal with forever, uh, or potentially this could be something where I'm not going to be able to get in the ring again. Uh, but um, after a, like a few, it was probably like two, two and a half months after that, I took the test again and I passed it with flying colors. Not only did I um, meet the average, but I exceeded the average. And when I saw that and the reaction from the doctor I was working with and, and her excitement as well, I'm like, Oh my God, we're going to do this. We're, we're going to make this happen. I'm, I'm going to be able to get back into the ring. So that the the one test I had to take for my brain when I when I eventually passed that test, that was like so so incredible to get that news at that point because again you, you're scared about losing the thing that you love the most. So that was the point where I was like, okay, we're going to make this happen. This is going to work. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets poor Steffi. All right. Yeah. Any anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her. It's going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. 
Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> what a crummy show. Oh. Wow! What do you want me to do about it? What the... If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.